So I guess you, if you're on a boat navigating the, uh, don't navigate it well, although he just came to on the right side of it. But if you don't navigate it well, you uh, run to the pylons and not the bridge. Makes sense. That was law enforcement, by the way. Just so that looked like the sheriff. Oh boy. We're gonna be following him upstream. All right, we are on Delta Road, and uh, we, we just came out of the, the small city of Brentwood. And what's curious is how quickly it transitions from uh, a very modern contemporary city to countryside. I mean, this is like rural in every sense of the word. I want to point out, look at the water level here on our left, on the river side of the levee, there's a levee, and this is the ground level beyond the levee. Look at the elevation difference there. It just shows uh, exactly how much, how much these levees have changed the, uh, the landscape here. This area would be entirely underwater. If not for the, you know, we're not really that far from Lodi. Um, and I, I don't think that's why I'm having my uh, CCR, Freedon's Clearwater Revival, uh, moments here. Delta, or it's California Delta. As the story goes, the Spanish at about 70, 1772 stood on Mount Diablo, which is behind us here, and looked out on this delta. And long before the levees were built, all they saw was endless spans of water. And they actually thought this was a, not a delta, they actually thought it was an inland lake. And there is Mount Diablo. Obscured in haze from the Bay Area, right there, pretty much in the middle of your uh, your screen. The uh, city of San Francisco would be beyond that, off to the right, San Francisco Bay, of course. Of course, long before the Spanish got here, uh, this area was was occupied for hundreds of years, as far as they know, by uh, by local Indian tribes, and it wasn't until about the 1840s, from what I've read that they actually started building, building up these, these um, levees here that we're gonna be exploring today. And the early levees were built by hand. Uh, they would last a year or two and get washed away. It wasn't until about 1850 or thereabouts that they developed what they call a clamshell dredge, which would basically go in, scoop huge quantities of silt off the bottom of the, uh, of the delta here and then built these levees that we're, uh, we're going to be exploring today. And so with the levees being constructed, we would take what was once something that looked like this, as far as the eye could see, into this, in some areas as far as the eye can see as well. Now, I've not been able to find any numbers on the approximate number of miles of levees that are here in the Delta. However, on many sources I've read, um, they estimate that there's between five and 600,000 acres of uh, land that's been reclaimed that is now farmland. And some of the stories actually suggest that some of the earliest farmers here were frustrated miners who, not finding their fortunes east of us up here in the gold country, 
came here and started farming once the levees were built. Going by some of the uh, preliminary stuff I've seen just driving out here, there's a lot, a lot of history here. Um, I haven't found any evidence going as far back as the 1850s yet, but definitely found some old history. So um, what's out here, what remains? I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll have to uh, take a drive here and see what we can find. So uh, with that, let's get started. All right, so I just, uh, I just looked at my notes again real quick. I need to amend what I told you earlier. Now they did start building the uh, levees here by hand in the 1840s, and I guess that even continued in the 1850s. Oh, and uh, look at that. There's that water line. We're we're gonna get back. We're gonna get back to that at a later date. That's that's an impressive piece of engineering. But anyway, so they actually um, uh, developed and. Uh, put to into work the or into service the clamshell dredge in about 1870 so so that would put our uh, our uh, hand-built dredges up uh, somewhere along the line about 20 years of uh, of work before uh, they developed the clamshell and it was actually the uh, gold rush the, you know, that began the uh, 1849 1850s that uh, really brought about the navigation of the Delta and it is estimated that because of the gold rush, at one time there were over 300 paddle wheel boats that were operating between, uh, between San Francisco, Sacramento, and Stockton along the Delta here. All right, we're gonna stop here for a moment. I found something really interesting I wanna show you. Yeah, so this island is interesting. But look at this train bridge. Oh, wow. That is a cool find. Look at that. I'm trying to figure out how that thing operates just by looking at it. Yep, that is a cool piece of engineering. The curious thing about this, I think this is actually an island. Now that I look at it, because if you look off to the right there, you can see some lumber. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's an old loading dock or I mean a old a boat dock or just timber's been washed down. Maybe we'll find out as we drive a little farther down. But interesting spot. Wow, that's neat. I'd I'd really like to find out the date of this uh, date of this piece of work. And I think that's actually somebody's residence there, with a boat sitting out here on the dock. All right, right in the center of your screen there, there's a pump station. You can actually, I don't know if you can hear it over the microphone, but you can, from here you can actually hear the pumps running. And here's more of that water line. Wow, that is impressive. So earlier I mentioned that the real construction of the levees began about 1870, a lot with the invention of the clamshell dredge. Another thing happened about that time. So uh, right about 1869, the completion of the um, um, Transcontinental Railroad took place. And with that, there was a huge labor force that was freed up. And um, a lot of that labor force obviously being here in, uh, in California. And with that labor force being free, they now had abundant labor for the levee, levee construction. So that really, a lot, that along with the clamshell dredge, really accelerated the, um, the uh, development of the levee system around here in uh, the California Delta. And while we're discussing some of the history of the um, of the uh, the Delta, by about 1930, uh, the railroads had made serious inroads into uh, moving tra moving product back and forth in the Bay Area and inland and and uh, from the inland back to the Bay Area. And they also had the refrigerated uh, boxcars. So with that, the uh, paddle boats and uh, paddle boat slash steamboat operations pretty much. Um, that was kind of the end of the end of the line. Now the last of the paddle boats were uh, taken out of service just before uh, World War II. And uh, curiously, as I was doing my research, I came across one, uh, a name I recognize, and it's called the Delta Queen. And Kelly and I actually had dinner on that um, several years ago now up in the Sacramento. So um, once that was removed from service, it was relocated to Sacramento and uh, it's now right there in Old Town. So uh, definitely recommend that if you get an opportunity to go, it's fun, um, good food, 
good entertainment. But uh, anyway, a cool little piece of history that at the time I had no idea of its, uh, its place along what we're looking at here today. And then of course with the, uh, the end of World War II and uh, Americans returning home and everybody wanting to have a good time and move, uh, move beyond the war, the Delta became a playground. And uh, with that, a lot of the resorts um, that you see now, and with that, you uh, started seeing the, uh, the activity that we're, uh, we're seeing a continuance of to this day. We are at Bullfrog Landing. And there's Bullfrog Marina. Another bridge. I'm uh, not sure what this one is called, but maybe we'll. Uh, I'm not sure we can cross this and well. Let's find out. Okay. All right. We got the green light. I guess we can go. Look at this. Wow. This is, uh, yeah, this is something else. Look at this. You know, when you look around, it's, it's just, it's hard to conceptualize that all this land was at one time underwater. But when you look at how high the water line is here, relative to the farmland on the other side of the, uh, the levees, it all kind of comes together. Wow, look at that. That is fascinating. More endless, endless miles of corn. This soil must be terrific for uh, grown corn. It's nice out here though. It is nice, just, it's quiet, peaceful. Um, probably for the last three or four miles we've seen, other than a few boats, out in the Delta, we've seen no activity out here. Fascinating. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. Look at that. I wonder what is the story with this bad boy? This guy uh, maneuvered himself way back deep into the delta here. All right, I'm thinking this is uh, just about as cool as I thought it might be. Look at this. So I'm reading the signage there. We are probably under surveillance as we record this. Makes sense though. So there's right in the center there, right in the center of your screen, there's the pivot point. So basically this whole thing, this whole section here, swings from the shoreline here to basically clear the channel so the boats can get through. Wow, how fascinating. That is awesome. And it looks like it's just this one section right here on this side. The other side does not do that, does not pivot. So what I'm wondering is, uh, how do they know when to uh, open this bridge? Huh. It looks like it's open to traffic. We're not going to be going across, but it looks like it's just open to traffic. Any traffic, although I know from Google Earth and going across that, it's uh, just more dirt road. So, uh, and it's not where we're headed anyway. We're, uh, we're actually headed in the opposite direction. So. All right, we are at the end of our journey down Bacon Island Road. And we are we're going to resume our journey, head towards uh, closer to the, uh, to the bay. It looks like they're doing a lot of levee maintenance here right now. A lot of levee maintenance. This is a pretty cool sky today, man. It's a really wicked sky. I would be flying my drone more out here, but I'm, there's a lot of, a lot of airplane activity. 
a lot of crop dusters it looks like and uh, maybe other aircraft so we may not be putting Louie up in the air much today unfortunately because this would be fantastic if we could. And an interesting name for a road, Bacon Island Road and came across this huge, huge, I guess you call it a lily pond. Look at that. Oh, wow, that is, that is beautiful. And this is what it's like on uh, a lot of the delta. You're just driving out the levee and Take it as far as far as it'll go. Oh, we have a fish dropping right, jumping right below us here. So you take the levee as far as it'll take you, and then you wind up in places like this where uh, there's like no activity. It's just quiet, very very quiet. Looks like a bass boat making good time to the next fishing spot. Or to dinner. It is getting late afternoon. Or maybe I'm just hungry. All right, so my uh, my plan is to put Louie in the air and get some aerial stuff. Um, at least out here on the Delta. At least this part of the Delta. Or, uh, kind of a bust, which is unfortunate because this this is beautiful and and it's really it's really fun to look at from Google Earth. So maybe I'll just crop some of those uh, images and put out here. But before leaving this and heading farther west, I thought we'd at least do a little bit of time lapse. All right, so this is what it's all about right here. This powdery, silty soil. Rich in nutrients and apparently very fertile. And this, when they built the levees, this is what they were uh, this is what they're trying to recover. All this, uh, all this nutrient-rich silt that was beneath the water. And that's what we have today. I have to admit, driving through here, everything seems to be pretty happy that's growing out of the soil. some cattle. Alright, we are in the uh, little community of Holt. H-O-L-T. Where uh, we pulled off of a uh, Highway 4 here on uh, what they call Whiskey Slough Road. Big, big piles of, uh, of fertilizer and I know you can't smell that through the camera, but that is robust. Now, I'll have to do my uh, research and see what these water lines are for, but look, I think this all comes out of the Delta. Actually, we're in the Delta, of course, but looks like those lines are running towards San Francisco. And then beyond here, this is looking, this is looking east. I've got I've to do my research and see what these are about. Exactly. That is impressive engineering. And then look right in front of us here. I think they call this the Midland Railroad. I'm not sure if this is Southern Pacific or what, but I'll, again, I'll do my little research on that and find out. But look at this, he's built the railroad right across the Delta. Yes, indeed, it is windy. The interesting thing with these uh, these levees is they are they're not necessarily what I call bumpy, but they're definitely rolling or undulating. I guess would be the word, you know, kind of like this. And uh, boy, the, your car is just pitching as it goes down it goes down the, the pathway here. But you know, I guess that makes sense. These are these have been around oh, wow since the uh, mid 1800s and rebuilt time and time again so I guess they settle over time. Look at this old operation. 
I don't know, the sheds, those uh, Quonset huts are the round dome buildings and the one to the left of it. Those might still be in use, but uh, obviously that old farmhouse has uh, long been abandoned. What a cool piece of history though. And another little uh, farmhouse back in here, it looks like. How cool is that? Another long defunct farming operation, or at least the home is. Maybe the shed still being used. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like that's been vacant for quite some time. All right, so here's another example where they uh, they straighten the channel. So a channel is flowing coming from this direction here. We're going that direction. And right here, you see this big bend in front of us here. This goes out and circles around. So what they've done is they've cut, they straightened it right here. And you see this, when you look at the uh, delta from uh, Google Earth, or the overhead views, you see all these cuts where they've straightened these channels out. So. These rivers used to just kind of wander or meander all across this delta. And then they came through with what they call a clamshell dredge. Dug all the mud out of the bottom and straightened the channel. Made it a lot easier for the boats to get through. Alright, we are back in Holt. And I want to take you over here. There it is, Whiskey Slough Road, Holt Road. Look at this old, old operation right here. Old Quonset hut. Becky's Bridge. Interesting. The curious thing about uh, out here is some of these berths appear to be, uh, these boats anyway, appear to be very much occupied. So I guess that's a uh, life on the river, right? So here's a really good example of uh, what the levees are doing here in uh, California. You look over here at the, this is a little harbor here along what they call Old River, which is part of the old uh, San Joaquin River. Pretty good amount of water over here. Now let me, let me pan across the levee. We're right on top of the levee here. And look over here how much lower the ground is over here. So there is a significant difference here in the level between our land looking east towards Stockton and west towards the Delta. All right, we're just not even a mile down the levee here from uh, the Tiki Resort. Now we're at the Turner Cut Resort. This is a this is a pretty good sized establishment here. All our boats on the left. If we pan over to our right, there's a there's a respectable sized camping area here. RVs.
That's something you notice right away driving down this road. You probably see it through the camera. Uh, these levees, I'm, I'm assuming they're, uh, they're settling all the time and being rebuilt over and over again. And uh, this road is very, I guess the word would be undulating. A lot of up and downs, a lot of... All right, we're in the small community of Knightston uh, out here on the uh, Delta. I just passed a historical marker. Uh, the town apparently was established in 1898. And uh, just found this old caboose here in a small little park uh, along the Santa Fe rails. Interesting. So I think we're gonna have to wrap this one up today. I got back out on Highway 4 and it's getting busy. Um, we're getting a lot of the Bay Area traffic. I'm, I suppose they're commuting back to uh, back to Stockton or that area. So uh, I'm gonna wrap it up today. There's a little, uh, just a little, little too much traffic out here for me to try and continue west, at least this hour of the day. So uh, we'll it will end here um, much uh, earlier than I'd planned, but at the same time, that'll give us more time when we we got a whole lot still to explore. Over in, uh, over in the Bay Area and uh, towards Martinez, Antioch, Pittsburgh, so on and so forth. So a lot to see. So we'll put that in the, uh, the second, we'll call it the part two video. So we'll see you then.